What's up? I'm Mike, N2MAK. I'm here in Western New York at the Carlton Hill Multiple Use Area to do a Parks on the Air activation. It's Saturday, June 14th, the first day of the June VHF contest. Let's get set up and get on the air. All right, this is gonna be the view today, but let's take a quick look at the setup. So yeah, we got a lot going on. <laughs> So let's start with the little things. First, a uh, dual band antenna. That'll be for two and 70 centimeters. Then over there, that's the signal stuff. Uh, mag mount and uh, signal stick antenna. And that's gonna be for 1.25 meters. Um, let's see here, here, triple mag mount. And we got a telescoping whip. That's the Wolf River Coils Enhanced Whip, uh, the 17 foot one. That's set for six meters. And then over here, we've got 14 element Yagi's. Uh, the loop Yagi uh, is uh, gonna be for 23 centimeters, 1.2 gigs. And then up there, we got a Yagi for 33 centimeters, uh, 900 megahertz. Those are connected to the uh, quirkiest HTs ever these Alinkos. Um the, the G29 will do 900 megahertz and 220 megahertz. And then the G7, which will power on. This is a tri-band that'll do uh, two meters, 70 centimeters. And it's also gonna do, I better turn the volume down. It's also gonna do uh, 23 centimeters, which is 1.2 gigahertz. So uh, very cool um, here. We got an Alinko mono band. You can see it's on 223.5. Um, that's hooked up to the Elk log periodic. Uh, a lot of the contesters run horizontal, so that's why you're going to have a lot of options for both horizontal and vertical, uh, regardless if we're doing FM or weak signal. I'll get to the radios in a minute. And then here uh, we have the uh, Momo Beams three element Yagi for uh, six meters. And uh, oh, it looks like that little element or middle elements a little tipsy i'll fix that and then uh the elk log periodic for two and uh 70. so the elk is going to be connected to the icom 705 for row uh, ssb on um, two meters and 70 centimeters the uh, mag mount uh, dual band is going to be connected to the icom 880h for um fm on two meters and 70 centimeters then we have the ICOM 7300. I got both six meter antennas connected to that. I'll use a switch to go between vertical and horizontal. And here's a bummer. I was loaned a ICOM ID1A. Uh, this is a 10 watt radio for 23 centimeters for 1.2 gigs FM in uh, D-Star. Unfortunately, it didn't have the right separation kit. I picked up a uh, ethernet uh, coupler in hopes that this would work but i can get the body to power on but i'm not able to get the uh, head unit to power on i'm not sure what's going on there so it's unfortunate so we're going to be limited to just one watt from the Alinko ht on um, 1.2 gigs but the thing about the uh, antennas these will give you a uh, 15 uh, dbi gain so that one watt becomes more like 15 and then the three watts on uh, 900 megahertz on the G29 Alinko uh, turns into more like 45 or so. Um, and even though I'm five watts on the uh, monoband HT, I forget what the gain is on the Elk, but um, it's definitely gonna bump that up. So anyway, I'm about a half hour late from when I wanted to be set up. Let's get on the air. And to MAK Rover, FN03. From November 2, Oscar Alpha. N2OA from N2MAK Stroke Rover, Fox Nancy 02. QSL, Dave? Hey, QSL, N2MAK Rover, N2OA, FN03. All right, <laughs> that'll do it for this location. I'm going to try to hit up one or two more parks uh, tomorrow with my son, so maybe there'll be part two to this we shall see but anyway i'm running crazy late got to get to a baseball game with the boys tonight and uh i got a lot of antennas <laughs> in gear to take down and put away so um 
7-3 for now, and uh, let me get packed up, and then we'll see if we continue the video or I give you final thoughts or what. Stay tuned. What is up? It is the second day of the contest. It's Sunday. It's Father's Day. But I got the big guns out with me now because look who I got. W2 BMK. Stroke Rover. <laughs> Tell them where we're at, Ben. We are currently at the Harriet Hollister uh, Memorial Recreation Center uh, area. US 8623, let's go. We are up about 2,000 feet here. That's Honey Oye Lake. Uh, this view and this location is what makes this honestly one of my favorite, favorite spots. Okay, very good. W2 BMK Stroke Rover, KD2 LGX, uh, an FN13. Uh, I've got uh, 162 elements and uh, just over a kilowatt pointed your way, uh, FM. <laughs> roger, roger. <laughs> yeah. roger, wow. Roger. Okay, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Two MAK Stroke Rover, Fox Nancy 12, QSL Larry. Wow, nice signal. <laughs> Roger, 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 roger. Please stand by for the second rover. All quiet, by the way. Awesome. Yeah, no, I got 15 elements, and uh, it's only 3 watts, but uh, it, it's, it's making the trip. We got a real clear path line of sight, 2,000 feet up. 60 over. Wow, 60 over. Awesome. All right, please stand by for Ben. I'll get him on. KD2 LGX. This is W2 BMK Stroke Rover at FN12 QSL. Roger, roger. All right, that's as high as we go, right? All right, hey, that'll do it up here. That was a uh, real quick rove. We're gonna go try to hit one other location. We got 17 contacts in the band, but we still gotta work each other on a, on a few of them before we, we, we head out. But uh, Ben, real quick, before we uh, bounce, what were your thoughts? Cause this is the first time you've played on 900 megahertz and 1.2 gigahertz. I thought that it was pretty fun. I'm happy to have gotten the experience, and since I haven't really been out much, it's really just a just a break from being just rotting in my room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, we're gonna work each other real quick and uh, hop in the car, pack up, and off to the next spot. So, just a couple random thoughts while we're on our way to the next park, the next grid square. Um, yeah, I'm roving this year, or this contest, back in January. I thought I was going to rove. I just uh, ended up doing a single op portable as a category. I, I didn't have enough time um, once I got set up to take down and go to another location. Like, and the reason I'm rambling like this is because uh, I'm trying to decide what I like best. Um, you know, do I like operating from just a single location? Um, I usually do the single op portable category. It's QRP, so you're limited to 10 watts, but that's what the 705 is. And uh, whether I'm doing digital or analog modes, um, you know, I got a lot of flexibility and capability there. But, you know, the nice thing about contests like this is it really gives you an opportunity to experiment and try new and different things. Um, obviously, some of these bands, like 1.25 meters or um, 900 megahertz. These tend to be lesser used bands for amateur radio in the U.S., but it's an opportunity to get active and try new things on them. And, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to experiment with new, new antennas, different radios, and in my case with this, you know, different styles of operation. The thing that gets me with, with roving is I don't have a good rove setup like some of the other rovers. Um, I mean, if you want to see something cool, Google the Stealth GTI. That car is just sick. An amazing setup. Um, but it takes a lot of time for me to uh, set up and, you know, operate. And just, you know, the first day of the contest, the park I went to is 45 minutes away. So it's an hour and a half in the car. And it took me close to 
an hour to set up and maybe like half hour, 40 minutes to uh, uh, take down everything. So that's three hours of travel and setup, and I operated for maybe an hour and a half or so. So, um, you know, not ideal, but uh, doing what we're doing today, I'm actually having a lot of fun doing this, and it's it's simple because we're just using handheld Yagi antennas and, and HTs and trying to go to parks that give us some elevation and some line of sight. So, um I don't know. I'm rambling. I'll put a bow on it by just saying RF around and find out. All right, we're at the next location. We're in the Erie Canalway National Heritage Corridor. It's Park US 6532, Grid Square, uh, FN 13 EA. So we're gonna get set up and uh, see if we can make a few more contacts real quick before we call it a day. All right, so I can't remember if I did this at the last park, so real quick. And we just got the antennas laying on the ground and, and the radios. So here's what we're using though. Um, DMS wireless 15 element Yagi for 900 megahertz. That's for 33 centimeters. That's with the Alinko DJ29. Um, the other Alinko, the DJ7 for uh, 1.2 gigahertz. I think it's, it's. Uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll put the name up on the screen, but it's a, a 14 or 15 element loop Yagi uh, for 1.2 gigahertz. Um, it's like directive systems or, or something, I don't know. Um, a Linko mono band on uh, 220, and that's the Elk uh, log periodic for 220. And this is the other Elk, the dual band for uh, two meters and 70 centimeters, and that's my Yesu FT4XR. So that's what we're working with here, folks. K2 ENE N2 MAK stroke rover FN13 QSL Harry. Roger, roger. Awesome, awesome. Please stand by for Ben. KA2 ENE. This is W2 BMK Stroke Rover at FN13. QSL? Uh, QSL, Ben. Copy FN1, FN13 from me as well. Look at Ben. He's got his own antenna guy. Antenna man. Antenna boy. <laughs> All right. That should do it here. Um, we got 10 in the log the hard way, uh, but we're still going to work each other on uh, five bands uh, before we uh, head out. It was a lot harder this year, and or I should say this time, not this year, because um, a couple of the contacts I was able to make on some of the higher bands on 23 and 33 centimeters, I was having a real hard time with. But the difference between June and January is all that green stuff <laughs> that you see around me. And when you get on to the higher frequencies, especially in UHF, um, the leaves, the foliage, foliage, I, I cannot say that word for the life of me, the, the foliage, there it is, I said it, the, the foliage uh, definitely attenuates the signal and can make it a little bit uh, more of a challenge. So um, same spot I was in back in January, a lot harder on, uh, on a couple of those bands, but um, you know, that, that's kind of one of the fun things about this is, you know, I don't always do VHF and UHF, but when, when you do, um, there's always a good opportunity to uh, learn because it can be so different than HF. <laughs> W2BMK Rover from N2MAK Rover FN13. You copy, Ben? N2MAK Rover from W2BMK <laughs> Rover. Copy everything. These are the, uh, those rad tells, the 860s, or I forget what the number is, that my buddy Jeff, KD2IO, loaned me. I, I mentioned these in the 6 meter FM video. Hi, Ben. <laughs> Um, I know a couple people in the comments mentioned they, they want to see me do a review. I'm still playing around with them, but um, I'll definitely uh, get to it. Uh, but for something like this, they definitely came in handy. All right, that's going to do it for real. Um, thanks so much for watching. We had a lot of fun. And uh, it was a busy weekend for a lot of reasons, not just the uh, contest between the family, kids, and everything else. But uh, real good time. I know I had a blast. What about you, Ben? Yeah. Me too. I mean, I don't usually go out to do anything with ham radio, especially now. 
So getting Slacker. out. <laughs> so getting out of my room just really helped. <laughs> Not my allergies. They're killing me. Yeah, it's brutal out here for sure. Awesome. Should we tell them to do anything at the end of the video? You make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications so you get notified the next time my dad uploads. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike, N2MAK. And I'm Ben, W2BMK. 7-3. 73. All right, real quick, um, back home and almost forgot just to add this real quick. Just want to say happy 75th anniversary to the Ontario VHF Association. I know that uh, myself, Ben, and uh, my club, the Rochester VHF Group, are going to be submitting our logs on behalf of the Ontario VHF Association for their 75th anniversary. So here's to you guys. Cheers. 7-3.